Hi everyone, this is Cheryl and welcome to my sewing room. I'm going to demonstrate how to make this cute country kitchen towel with a chicken applique on it. It's a great way to introduce yourself to machine applique stitching. So let's get started. You'll need the following supplies for the towel. One kitchen towel of your choice. I recommend you keep the towel relatively plain. Uh, don't let the print on it get too busy because you want the chicken applique to stand out. I'm using Pellon Light Easy Steam 2 two-sided fusible web for the chicken applique. And this is what the package looks like. You can get this at Joann Fabrics and Crafts. You can go on the internet, go to Amazon.com or other sewing and crafting supply websites. Your fabrics, you can use up scraps. I highly recommend that. Go to your scrap pile and use those scraps up. Or if you don't have scraps, you'll don't purchase more than one eighth of a yard. For the chicken applique, I'm using four different colors. If you want to put the fabric border on the bottom, you would need an additional piece of fabric for that. I'm also using rickrack on that border, which is also an option. If you want to have that on there, you're going to need about a half of yard. Here is how you're going to draw your pattern. I recommend you first draw a grid like this that is five inches across and three inches down and then draw lines one inch apart and I used a uh, ink pen to draw this so that if you need to erase the, the pattern a little bit and correct it you won't erase your grid lines so down here where the chicken pattern is notice where everything is within the grid and draw this pattern as close as you want to it. Remember, it's your chicken. If you want to change the way it looks, go right ahead and do that. You also have the option of putting little legs on the chicken, and I will go over that later on how to do that. Once you have your chicken drawn, then go ahead and cut the pieces out of your paper. Now, I like to draw my pieces onto cardstock. So because I will probably use this pattern many times on when I make gifts for people. So the cardstock holds up better when you're tracing around it. So you can either keep it on the paper or use the cardstock. This is the Pellon fusible wet that you need to use for the chicken. There's two sides to it. There's plain paper on the back and then there's grid lines on the front, okay? This is the side you want to trace your design on. Now you'll notice that on here I have the word left on this. This is where the little eye is because this is a left facing chicken. It's facing to your left side. So you're going to need so that it comes out to the left and all pieces come out to the left you want to write the word left on that side so that everything is oriented in the correct direction and fits properly. So when you go to trace it, turn it face down and trace it in reverse because this glue is going to go on the back side of your fabric. So make sure you flip all of your pieces over and trace it on the grid line side. Then with a pair of scissors, you're gonna cut it out, but don't cut on the drawn lines. Go out about a quarter of an inch all the way around and cut all of your pieces out. After you have all of your pieces cut out on the fusible web, then go ahead and select your fabrics. And this is the front side of my fabric. So you want to turn it over onto the back side. Take the back side off of the fusible web, which is the plain paper. And if you have a hard time getting it to come off, just take a straight pin and just score it 
So you're tearing the paper. Then bend it a little bit till a corner comes up. Then just take it off. And make sure you don't remove the glue. So right now this is real sticky on the back. Then place this on the back side of your fabric. Then finger press it down. Now you're going to cut it out on the drawn lines. So do that with all of your pieces. This is the towel that I'm using. I purchased this towel at Walmart. They have very reasonable prices on their towels and you can get them in packages anywhere from two to four in a package. So you could make a lot of these towels if you wanted to. I could leave this border showing, but I decided I'm going to cover it up and I'm going to use this fabric here to cover it up. So what you want to do is measure the width of your towel, whatever that measurement is, add another inch and a half to the width and then decide how much of the bottom you want to cover. Mine is not quite four inches, so I'm adding a couple of inches or an inch and a half at least because you're going to need to hem this strip. So go ahead and cut that strip out. Now here's mine. At each end, fold it over and press about a quarter of an inch. And do this at your ironing board because it'll go really fast and then make sure you do it on the other end. Fold it over a quarter of an inch. Then on one side, you're gonna fold it over a quarter of an inch, and then on the other side, you're gonna fold it a quarter of an inch once, and then fold it again twice. Then stitch along the top, folded edge right along here, all the way across. After stitching your hem in down here, then place the strip across the bottom. And you're going to have a little bit extending past each edge. And if your towel is uneven at the bottom, like mine is, I pulled it down a little bit so that it covers this lower edge of the towel. So that's what I recommend that you do if your towel is uneven. See how it curves in here? Now fold these edges over onto the back and pin it to hold it down. So you want to do that on both sides. Fold it over on this edge here. After you've got it folded and pinned, then go ahead and stitch along this edge right here with this folded behind it. Stitch all the way across and with this folded behind, stitch all the way down. Here's mine after I've done all of the stitching. Now you can leave it just like it is, or as an option for a decorative trim, you can put rickrack right over that top edge, wrap your ends around on the back, and then stitch right down the center of the rickrack. To find the center of your towel, fold your towel in half and place a pin on that fold line. And you're doing this so that you know where to place your applique chicken on. After finding the center, you're going to take your applique pieces for the chicken and you're going to place them on the towel. Now you have two choices here. If you'll notice in the original design here, I have two little legs coming down. So you could take uh, stitch the legs on by using a narrow satin stitch and just stitch them maybe an inch or so long and stitch the little feet going out there. Or you can choose to make it look like the chicken is just sitting on the border resting. So it's however you want to do it. So when you're going to place your applique pieces on there, you want to first remove the paper again. So score it, tear that paper, bend it so that a corner pops up, and be careful not to remove the glue with it because you need that on the fabric, 
and remove the paper off the back. So go ahead and set it where you want it. Now I think I'm going to do chicken legs, so I'm going to set it right about there. Then you would continue t taking the rest of the pieces and placing them in their position. As you can see here, I've put the edge of the beak and the little crown piece up here underneath the edge of the body just slightly. So you want it just under there just a little bit. And I often use tweezers to place little pieces like this. As far as the wing goes, I have it going straight across, but if you want it to go up like this, you can also do that. So remember, it's your chicken, so have fun with it. Play around with it. See how you like it to be placed. After you have all of your pieces laid out, then it's time to permanently fuse it onto the towel. So always follow the instructions that comes with your fusible web, especially if you're using another brand. So mine says to put a damp towel over it. And remember, you're doing this at your ironing board or on a pressing mat. Mine says to spray, or excuse me, damp cloth. I always keep a little spray bottle at my ironing board. Then place the iron on top of it. Hold it for whatever the number of seconds it tells you to do on your package. I usually hold mine down for 12 to 15 seconds. Then after you're done, I like to let it cool down just a little bit before I do the decorative stitching. When you're doing decorative stitching around applique pieces, you need to have stabilizer behind the towel. You're going to put it behind the chicken applique and make sure it covers the entire chicken in the back. Also another thing you're going to need, or I recommend you use, is an open toe presser foot. There is nothing in the way of the needle. You can see exactly where you are stitching. If you don't have one, you can still do this without it, but you can see so much better with this. I'm going to give you a stitching order that I recommend. If you have the legs on it, do your legs, and I'll talk more about that in just a moment. Do the beak and the little crown piece. Do your decorative stitching on those three areas first. Then do the body and then the wings. Do that. Your decorative stitching will go slightly over these pieces here and the very top of the legs. So it'll co uh, cover up any little jagged starting points that you may have with your stitching. And then of course the wing would be the last thing to stitch on. As far as how to do the legs, you can do your legs to where it's going straight down like it's standing or if you want it to look like it's running around looking really wild and crazy, you can have one leg going this way, one leg going that way. It's however you want to do it. I recommend you use a small satin stitch. I used the satin stitch and went out about an inch, maybe an inch and a quarter. It all depends on how long you want your legs. So I did both of those. Then I started over here went up at a diagonal, left the needle down, lift up the presser foot, and then continue stitching down this way. So I did like a little V. So that's how you would do the feet. I also forgot to mention about the eye. The eye, again, I used that little satin stitch and just stayed in place a little bit, went back and forth a few times, and that's how you create the eye. After all your stitching is done, then just go ahead and tear away that stabilizer. It should come off really, really easy. For more kitchen towel projects, go to the green screen at the end of this video and click on the links. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click on thumbs up and click on share to share this video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed yet, 
click on that red subscribe button down there in the lower right hand corner of your screen. Don't forget to enter your email address and click on that little bell so that you'll receive email notifications when my latest video has been released. I'm Cheryl and I'm so glad you came to my sewing room. I'll see you next time and happy sewing!